This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship at South Church New Britain online. I am so glad that you have come to this virtual space to worship God. South Church is an open, welcoming and affirming congregation affiliated with the American Baptist Churches and the United Church of Christ. It is our commitment to be a community where all are welcome, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. This afternoon, we will hold an in-person worship service in our sanctuary beginning at 2 p.m., which will include the service of communion. Pre-registration is no longer required, so please do not hesitate to come and encourage others to come as well. We will ask you to sign in when you arrive and to wear a mask throughout the service. We will hold another afternoon service on June 20th, and we will begin in-person services on Sunday mornings, every Sunday, beginning July 11th at 9.30 a.m. On Saturday, June 26th, many churches in New Britain will be joining together at Walnut Hill Park in the Convoy of Hope, where food will be distributed to people in need and other services will be offered as well. Volunteers are needed all day, starting with a two-hour shift at 11 in the morning to unload boxes from a tractor trailer. If you would like to participate, please be in touch with me for more information. Now, please join me in our responsive call to worship. Let us worship the eternal God, the source of love and life who creates us. Let us worship Jesus Christ, the risen one who lives among us. Let us worship the spirit, holy fire, who renews us. To the one true God be praise in all times and places through the grace of Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. God of tenderness, we thank you that you care for us individually and intimately. We thank you that you know us through and through and love us as we are. Help us to open ourselves to your love that we may be filled and pour out love for others. We pray in the name of Jesus, in the way that he taught his disciples. Oitje nash, turish yest vienyebye, shrienchen imien tvoya, pshisht kurlest votvoya, bonch volat voya, Jakob niebye taki na jemi. Leba nashego povšeniego dainem jishai, i odpushnam nashe vini, jako imi odpushtami nashem vino vajcom. I niebush nash da pokošenja, Ale nas zbav odezuego. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, by your Spirit, tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do to obey Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today is. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 through 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Our scripture readings continue as we read from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Who is someone who knows you well? If you have ever applied for a job, it's a question you have had to think about. As you fill out that application and it asks for references, you need to ask yourself, who knows me well enough to speak to my skills and qualifications, my character, my work ethic, and my ability to get along with people? You want to choose someone who has seen you in action, someone who has known you long enough and well enough to be able to imagine you in a new setting, facing new challenges and opportunities. I think of that example not because I'm in the process of job seeking. Thankfully, I'm perfectly happy right where I am. But at this time of year, it's not unusual for me to be asked to serve as a reference for church members seeking a job. It's a request I take seriously. I try to reflect deeply and honestly on what I know about a person as I describe them to others. And in this season of our church life, as we prepare to expand our ministry with a new music director, digital ministry coordinator, and other staff members, We want to listen deeply to the references for our applicants to get a good sense of what they know about them, not just their skills, but who they are as people and how they would fit in our context. We want to know them as well as we can before we hire them. Yet someone who serves as a reference is someone who knows you in a certain kind of way. So let me ask the question again. Who knows you well? Really well? Many would answer, my parents, who knew me from birth or adoption or foster care forward through the challenges and changes of growing up. At Bible study this week, some people recalled how well they were known by neighbors, having grown up at a time when kids wandered more freely from house to house and everyone kept tabs on each other. Others described having this experience growing up in church with adults who paid attention to them and knew them by name. Some have experienced being known very well by a teacher or a pastor, perhaps at a time in life when they felt that their parents did not know or understand them very well. Some would say that their spouse 
or life partner is the one who knows them best, with whom they have shared the highs and lows and ordinary moments of life. Others might answer that a brother or sister or friend is the one who knows them or knew them well, someone with whom they could share their deepest secrets. I hope that as I invite you to reflect on this question, you can identify one or more people who have known you well in your life, for it is a blessing to be known. The psalm from which we read today and which will guide our meditations over the next few weeks of worship affirms that we are known by God thoroughly and completely, better than the closest friend or the most astute parent or the wisest teacher, we are known by God. Better than we know ourselves, we are known by God. As we travel, as we rest, as we think, and as we speak, God knows us. God's presence hems us in, as this version reads, surrounding us from the front and from the back. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, says the psalmist, and for some, such knowledge might also be a bit disturbing. Some of us grew up with the warning, God is watching you, which sounded more like a threat than a reassurance causing us to fear God's punishment if we made the wrong move. To be told that God knows our thoughts might sound intrusive and worrisome because all of us have thoughts we would rather not have anyone know, including God. And to hear that God is hemming us in behind us and in front of us can feel pretty confining, like a teenager wanting to escape the close supervision and strict rules of their parents. We might want to break free from such intense scrutiny and presence. Give me space, God. I suspect that the psalmist had had moments like those in younger life. As we move further into the psalm next week, we will hear the psalmist suggest ways that one might try to escape the presence of God. But my sense is that this psalmist has had enough life experience to learn that to be known by God is a good thing. For as we heard Paul express in the reading from Ephesians that Amanda read, the God who knows us is the God whose love in Jesus Christ is so deep, so broad, so high that it is immeasurable. The God who knows us loves us infinitely and intimately. I think the power of this psalm is in the intimacy of its language. The psalmist is not talking about the fact that God knows him. He is talking to God who knows him. This is not a treatise about the omniscience of God. No, this is a prayer to God, a conversation with God. That is what gives it such intimacy and power and is at least in part why it is a favorite for so many. For a few moments, 
I want to invite you to soak in the intimacy of these words. Yahweh, the psalmist begins, using the name by which God revealed God's self to Moses. Yahweh, I am who I am. I am the God of your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh is my name forever. God had spoken these words to Moses from the burning bush using this name. We translate it, Lord. This God, revealed, in the, revealed to the great ancestors of the faith, is the one to whom the psalmist turns in intimate prayer. Lord, you know me. You, who are the creator of the universe, you, who revealed yourself to Abraham, making an everlasting covenant with him and his descendants, you, who appeared to Moses and liberated your people Israel from slavery, you, who came to earth in the flesh of Jesus Christ, you, Lord, are the one who knows me, better than I know myself. I'm going to say this phrase, Lord, you know me, four times. And each time, I would like to invite you to repeat it after me, echoing not only the words, but the emphasis I give to those words. Allow the words and their meaning to sink into your being. Close your eyes so that you might better sense the closeness of God in these moments. Lord, you know me. Lord, you know me. Lord, you know me. Lord, you know me. It is true that we can never comprehend how fully God knows us. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, says the psalmist. It is so high that I cannot attain it. It is true, as the Apostle Paul says, that we can never measure the immensity of God's love for us in Christ. But dwelling on those words, soaking in them, perhaps for a few minutes every day, will move us closer to this God who knows us completely and loves us just as we are. My husband, 
likes to share the advice that his grandfather gave him whenever he had some trouble on his mind. Soak it in prayer, Grandpa Brown said. The thing about soaking, Ron says, is that it takes time. If you are soaking a stained piece of clothing, it takes time for the water and cleaning solution to do their work. If you are marinating a piece of meat, it takes time for the meat to draw in the flavors of the marinade. In the same way, soaking things in prayer takes time. But over time, prayer does its work. Over time, prayer changes us. During this week and this month, I invite you to join me in taking a good long soak in Psalm 139 allowing it to draw you and me into a deeper, more intimate relationship with the one who knows us and loves us more than we can ever fully know. Thanks be to God. The generosity and compassion with which God knows us flow through us to others so that they may know that they are loved too. That is the mission of this church as we embody God's love in the heart of the city. Thank you for your pledges and offerings which make this ministry possible. Your gifts sent to the church, given online at southchurch.org, or offered through a conversation or a kindness or a prayer, are all signs of God's generosity and love. Let us dedicate these gifts. Gracious, generous God, we thank you for all the ways you have blessed us. And we pray that you would bless the gifts that we offer you this day and this week. 
that truly it might be your spirit inspiring us and your generosity moving through us that all may know your love and grace in their lives. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. In company with all who hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the sharing of this life-giving bread. Let us pray. Mighty God, we give you thanks for your power revealed through the cross of Jesus, your Christ. In love beyond our ability to comprehend, you came to save us from sin and reconcile us to yourself, giving us the hope of eternal life. We give you our heartfelt thanks and praise. O God, as the grain from many fields is gathered up in one loaf, so bring us together across the distances that separate us, that we might be your one body in Christ. As the bread is broken and given for the life of the world, so move through the broken hearts we offer you to bring healing and wholeness to many. As we share this meal, May we know the power of your presence and the joy of your community whose brokenness has been made whole by your love. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table that we may know your presence with us and among us now and to eternity. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance. Of me. And in the same way, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup. Again, giving thanks to God, he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many people for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. In joy we come to this table, for in joy we receive these gifts freely given, the gifts of God given for the people of God. Eat and drink and know the joy of Christ's presence in this meal.
let us come before God in thanksgiving. We thank you, O God, for inviting us to this table in the presence of Christ and in communion with Christians across the miles. We thank you for revealing yourself to us through words of scripture, through the intimacy of prayer, and through these simple gifts of bread and juice. Strengthen our faith. Increase our love for one another and prepare us to share your love and grace with all whom we meet. Gracious God, we hold in our hearts those who are grieving deeply the death of one they love. We pray for Hannah Machowski, mourning her partner Joe's death, and for his children and grandchildren in their mourning. Comfort them to know his suffering is over and he is at peace with you. We pray for Tammy Breuer and her family, especially her aunt Kathy, as they mourn the unexpected death of her uncle Alan. And for Teresa and her children and a wide circle of family and friends, who mourn the sudden death of John Gonzalez. May all of these who mourn be sustained by your strength. We pray for Kathy and her family caring for her daughter Debbie with the support of hospice. And for Kathy as she recovers from surgery let your healing love be real to them all. Be with the many who are in need of your sustaining grace to face the challenges before them. We pray for Jim, Floyd, John, Victor and Noemi and their children, Nicholas, Lee, Esther, Ronald, Joe, Eileen, Kristen, Novelette, Tisha, Jim and Allison, Jean, Jack and Barb, Melissa, Susan, Sophie, Joyce, Lisa, Paula and Leonard, Nikki and Noel, Corey, Bridget, Luce, Sarah and Marty, Ruth, Beth, Sharon, Kim, Tori, Skip, Lois, Angie, Sedessa, and Cassie, Evelyn, Paulette, Leslie, Amber, and Gladys, Bob, Kevin, Johnny, Donna, Douglas, and Holly, Norman, Bradley, Gina, Michael, Tom, Pam, Marie, Karen, John, Steve, Suhua and Kihun, Melissa and her family, Mary Ann, Peter, Timothy, Claire, Mary Ellen, and Dennis. We join Myrna in giving thanks for the good news Tala received after recent surgery, and we pray for her full recovery. Hear us as we lift our prayers for others who are on our hearts. We thank you, Lord, that this table where we gather is not a table of sorrow, but a table of joy. For Christ is risen, death has been defeated, and hope prevails. Lift our eyes and our hearts to the signs of renewal and hope that you offer us this day. Give us joy in knowing that you know us and that you are with us wherever we go. In the name of the risen Savior, we pray. Amen.
bound together by all that God has done, will go with joy to give the world the love that makes us one. Go into the world this day and this week in joy, knowing that you are known by God, loved with a love beyond measure. Soak in that love and let it flow through you to others. In the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, who sustains us always. Thanks be to God. Amen.